Welcome back to Make Money Online. The former SEC chair thinks it was wrong for the SEC to sue Ripple. But is she right? We'll also be looking closely at the events that succeeded the pre-trial and draw lessons from the 22nd of February conference, alongside other XRP news as well as some latest price predictions. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel to watch more interesting videos like this one. According to you today, Ripple enlisted the support of the former chairman of the Securities Commission, Mary Jo White. Since the time she left her post working with the SEC, she'd been reported to be a form of consultant for Ripple Labs. And thus it was not so surprising when the company revealed her as one of their defense counsels. It was a commendable move on the part of Ripple, as she seemed to be the perfect person to carry the flag of the company against her former agency. Her prior knowledge and experience in working with the SEC was always going to come in handy in any case. And as we saw on the day of the trial and before that day, the SEC were literally thrown in a state of dishevelment. However, her involvement in the case was always expected to throw the case Ripple's way. And it was interesting when she first spoke out questioning the basis of the lawsuit, filed by the then-chair of the SEC, who stepped down coming into the year. She pointed out several problems in the Ripple case, in particular, during the investigation into the circumstances. Speaking as a former U.S. attorney and former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, she insisted that it was all wrong from the start. Aside from the fact that the assumption that Ripple were trading illegal securities was wrong, alongside the charges levied against the chairman Chris Larson and CEO Brad Garlinghouse for using the crypto to enrich themselves as well as the board of directors of the company, the timing was also awful. She claimed that if arranging a case took as long as eight years to sort out and gather evidence, it's better not to push the case at all. What's more, you'd think the agency would be sure of the direction in which they were taking the case, but it proved to be otherwise when the SEC actually amended their stance on the charges moments before the pretrial conference, which was held on the 22nd. The defendants, after having listened to the SEC's side of the discourse on the reasons why XRP is a security, compared the facts to that of Ethereum another cryptocurrency which the SEC had at some point declared to be a currency rather than a security. It begs the question whether the suit was malicious intent on the part of the former chair of the SEC, under whose leadership the suit was filed as a parting act. Was there any other motive behind the move, or did he do it to favor another crypto which he might have been passive to? These are the questions popping into the minds of investors. Why declare XRP a security based on the same notion by which another crypto was exonerated? It shows a level of toothlessness and the fact that the SEC seems to be out of their depth over this case. The reduction of the charges down to the use of the crypto for illegal gains on the part of the chairman Chris Larson and CEO Brad Garlinghouse, which were also baseless, as well as other amendments made prior to the pre-trial, meant whatever the SEC planned to do was not working. The SEC removed the market manipulation claims it had levied against the crypto company accusing them of purposefully hyping their token via media and social media influence, and doubled down on their claims of Ripple violating securities law for profit. The motion of the SEC requires that the sale of XRP tokens be recognized as illegal, and also insists that Larson and Garlinghouse return the money received from the sale of tokens to users, pay a fine for violation of the law, and be no longer allowed to trade securities. The general counsel for Ripple, in this case, Stuart Alderati, has criticized the SEC for its recent amendment and claim that the regulatory body has no concrete evidence, just claims which have come down from several accusations of market manipulation to just one. According to the information that ensued from the lawsuit, a couple of exchanges asked the SEC in the past if they could trade XRP on their platforms, and they were not denied. This surfaced from a report in 2019, and you can wonder what could have caused their stance to change just a year later in 2020 when they filed the lawsuit. So why did the SEC let exchanges trade XRP for the past eight years if they were still going to sue later? It's obvious that there will be many more revelations as the case proceeds. With no further hope of settlement, we'll see just how this case goes into a full trial. It seemed that the court hearing did not really worry XRP token users. As the day saw the cost of the cryptocurrency grow by 15% and traded at around 57 cents, XRP rose to a daily high of 63 cents before registering a minor correction. The altcoin's rise is also in contrast to the market, where the majority of the cryptocurrencies registered minor corrections after an almost four-day-long bullish rally. 
However, one questionable act is that of ex-CTO of Ripple, who continues to drain coins, potentially limiting the further growth of the coin beyond current levels. According to news reports, Jed McCaleb, ex-CTO of Ripple Labs, remains the main seller of XRP. He regularly gets rid of billions of XRP by selling off his holdings. McCaleb is receiving tokens based on XRP trading volume and is estimated to dump about 3 billion coins into the market in the coming months. Also, it was reported a few days ago that about 20 million XRP went to crypto exchanges from Ripple CEO Chris Larson. This is about $10 million worth. With both Larson and McCaleb actively dumping XRP, it's unlikely that Ripple will be able to resolve the conflict with the SEC anytime soon. This could possibly give the SEC a grip in the case. Before the pre-trial, both sides published a joint letter stating that they cannot come to an agreement and fundamentally disagree with each other's positions. With this, however, the experts themselves are confident that the court proceedings may drag on for years. XRP has managed to recover from its post-lawsuit crash since January. However, unlike other altcoins, which have managed to register new all-time highs this bull season, XRP has failed to hold on to its gains. If Ripple gains a notable upper hand in the legal battle against the SEC, the price of the token would surely see some positive inflow and rise. Predictions are on course for XRP in the coming days, after having overcome what was expected to cause a crash in its value. We heard several predictions suggesting that the price could fall as low as 20 cents just by the event of the pretrial. Let's look at a couple of charts and price predictions before wrapping this up. This chart shows a one-day XRP USD time frame. Things seem to be shaping up for a rise as we set to enter into March. Will it happen? In a few days, we'll find out. The formation of the triangle and its side altars were shown before it was formed. The edges of the triangle, support and resistance, were shown quite accurately in advance. It was possible, if desired, to work within the forming triangle, with initially large enough waves from support at $0.44 cents to the resistance at $0.77 cents of the formation. But things could play out in a much better light with the price actually hitting $0.70 cents and establishing a new support at 63 In this chart, XRP seems to have been following the resistance of a master ascending line for years. This can also be seen as a channel. Notice how it has provided resistance and only large swift moves seem to cross it. It dipped below the line at the beginning of the pandemic. Breaking resistance in the channel would put us into the $1 range, up to around the $2.5 range, close to that important 2.36 Fib level. Downward resistance would be around the $0.41 cents level. Of course, back in 2017, we blew through this channel. Something similar would put us near $54 by the end of the year. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell so you can get updates whenever we post a new video. The number of charges built up against Ripple has magically been reduced to one. What do you think of the late amendment of the SEC? Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of the videos on your screen. See you next time.